my dear. The next questions will be from me, okay? Or two of you first, and then I will go to set and so much. Okay, so for, I think you mentioned about semiconductors, we know this. So now, um, to capitalize further on that question, what are the challenges for the Philippines to, for us again, to better capitalize on this Asian development perspective? Okay, I'll start with you since you have this. <laughs> Challenges of the Philippines or challenges of China? Well, I guess we both Okay. Well, as I mentioned, if uh, sorry, before me, semiconductors in themselves are fundamental foundational technologies. I cannot advance AI without a solid semiconductor. I cannot continue machine learning without a really advanced semiconductor. I cannot create even better smartphones, better TPS without those semiconductors. And with the regulations in place, the United States has made it difficult for China to get the technology, not for free, but for by purchase. And without that, how can they advance their own local markets? Um, that I feel is the number one, number one challenge for China. Now, looking at how embargoes have worked in the past, especially with what they did to Cuba, I have a feeling that China will find a way to advance their own markets, regardless of the effect of the embargo. Um, the trade embargo on Cuba, for instance, when there are no imports or exports to Cuba for any motor vehicles, they developed highly skilled mechanics. Who ended up, up to now, those cars are still running. The cars you see in the movies, the 1950s, 60s, is a dance, are still running in 2020. So the shift would be, if I cannot get access to the technology, I will upskill my human resources. And that may be the way that uh, China will continue its, its advancements to the, the technological base. Actually, that's the fear and the opportunity. You know? It looks like the world is being divided. Uh, and you can see the lines getting uh, darker and, and bigger. And uh, will the Philippines be forced to choose? Maybe we can ask that question. Uh, did you want to say something on the education sector, Dr. Erwin? Uh, on the, on the, Philippine, uh, the challenges in the Philippines in being able to better capitalize on the China's economic reforms. Uh, I think, yeah, I, I just want to uh, reiterate what uh, Attorney Pusso uh, said. I think it's better to, you know, uh, well, we learn more and we can find more opportunities if, if we place in a more difficult context, like, for example, what happened in, in, in uh, Cuba. So uh, I think, uh, well, we have a lot of our human resources and of we all know that we are exporting human resource from, you know, any parts of the, the world. And uh, I think it's better to be a, a, a very good starting point, springboard to capitalize on human resources here in the Philippines. And we know very well that many of the Filipinos, they are really good. Okay. And of course, uh, I just want to mention the advanced, uh, when it comes to advancement of technology. Um, I think it's about time that we can learn from China or collaborate uh, with them when it comes to the use of technology, especially in education. We want to advance our education, we want to achieve quality education, but how? Experiencing this new normal, we need more advanced technology in order to deliver quality education, not just here in the rural area, but also in the uh, not just in the urban, but also in the rural area. And how can we do that? I think we can learn from them. Uh, Arlene got her PhD from one of the top uh, universities in China. Um, so maybe you can ask for some examples later on. Now on this uh, divide, will the Philippines be forced to choose? Do we have to choose or can we balance the two giants? Uh, Mr. George C. and then Senator Kit Tatan. I'd like to give a little input on the education side. No? The uh, Chinese system is different from the American system. The American system, uh, in terms of training, is actually excellent. 
you know, we have to say it's, you know, having been to both sides, it's excellent. That's why people all over the world know this stuff. Yeah, but there are two different uh, technologies and aspects coming up. And so if the U.S. is uh, restricting the technologies and things that can go to China, but we have to remember that uh, China has focused so much on this uh, education that in the PISA exams, the top four or five slots are Chinese in the whole world. So the top four or five. And top uh, Chinese 80, provinces. Chinese provinces, not the country. And 80% of the top are East Asian countries. No, so that culture, uh, cultural factor is very important because we look at uh, two things. One is uh, in terms of advancement of China. China has uh, more than one and a half. Uh, they have more than three times the number of graduates in the U.S. And then more of them are in STEM courses than the U.S. as a percent. So they are going to catch up. It's inevitable. But it can be slowed down by these restrictions. But uh, what we fear is that uh, if, because the restrictions have become so tough, the law but later on, so you know, it might not be as open. We cannot expect as open uh, uh, society if they go on. So, tayo naman sa Philippines, we have much to learn. Uh, China has many things that the U.S. may be. There's a practicality of decision making that's in China, in Asia, that's no. You know, what I'm saying is, U.S. may be very practical. Now they're very political. So uh, we have to be very practical, but we cannot adopt this whether from U.S. or from China if we are spending most of our time on consumption and pressure. Because the Filipino, as I was uh, telling one of our interviewers earlier, are, they have the smartest people in the world because all over the world they're using uh, Filipino scientists and finance people, analysts, even the U.S. Many of the top companies use Filipino you know, uh, manager finances. Pero, pero, what are we doing here? We are weak on implementation and execution of the ground. So our people have to spend more time using this technology to learn from YouTube, from the best in the world, from YouTube, from whatever sources. No, you don't need Harvard now. You don't need Stanford now. All of them are there. And uh, I, I'm a Chinese by blood. I have a hard time understanding the language. I have a hard time understanding the system. So if wherever we learn, then but then the entrepreneurship system is very strong. So let's learn from that. And the only way to learn from that is if we're going to spend time on it. So we're looking at these countries and what the politics, politics are and whatever. We want, if we can, help our people to spend less time on politics and spend more time trying to learn how to be productive. So, and this is how we learn from everybody. And I was saying we're now looking between China and US, but the predictions are in 10 years, Intel will be the number three largest economy in the world and possibly might even surpass the U.S. too and then possibly surpass China. So the opportunities are all there, uh, are all there. It doesn't matter which country it is, the markets are there, it's up to us. Uh, just to 